All right, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we took a look at a series RLC circuit, and we ended up deriving this second-order differential equation. Uh, from there, we talked about two important ratios. One is called the natural frequency. Uh, this is the frequency that the circuit would oscillate at if it left to itself. And the oscillation basically happens because energy is being transferred from the inductor to the capacitor and capacitor to the inductor in this particular case. Then we also said that the 2 zeta omega n, uh, which is the coefficient of the first order term in a standard differential equation, is equal to R over L. Uh, is what we, So zeta basically becomes 1 over 1 half omega n R over L. So zeta, we said last time, tells us whether uh, something was underdamped, overdamped, and what was something was critically damped, right? So let's basically take a look and, uh, and see what uh, we can do here uh, by putting in some values of RLCs and seeing how the circuit might behave. So what we'll do is we'll put values of L and C at 1 millihenry uh, and 1, micro, uh, 1 millifarad, just for the sake of uh, argument, and I'll set up the voltage input source at 10 volts uh, and see. So uh, I'm using um, multi-sim, national instrument multi-sim uh, for this particular purpose. It's just a general purpose spice uh, or a circuit simulator as they call it. So in this particular circuit, I have this voltage source set up at 10 volts uh, and it steps at 10 millisecond, meaning the voltage source is zero for 10 millisecond. At, at 10 millisecond, all of a sudden the switch is turned on and the voltage source becomes goes from zero to 10. When that happens, when that happens, this particular circuit, uh, since there are two elements in it, uh, sees this violent uh, event happen, and we're basically going to look at the voltage across the capacitor. So, so I have an oscilloscope that's looking at the input, and I have an oscilloscope that's looking at the voltage across this one millifarad capacitor. So, this particular circuit right now has one millihenry and one millifarad capacitor. Okay. Now, if I go back to this, this basically says that the zeta, if r is equal to zero, so zeta equals zero. Okay, uh, zeta equals zero, meaning there's no damping factor. So all we have is this natural frequency of oscillation that's guided by l and c. So one over l c square root of that. Okay. In our case, one we have one millihenry and one uh, millifarad capacitor, so let's see what that oscillation might look like. So what we'll do is basically start with that. So here's my circuit again. I've set the voltage source to 10 volts. Uh, it'll turn on after 10 millisecond. I've set the resistor for 0 ohm, uh, zero ohm right now, and I have milli, 1 millihenry and 1 millifarad capacitor. So let's hit simulate. So when I hit simulate, what I see, notice that I have an oscillation. So I have basically uh, a circuit that's producing a perfect sine wave. It's an LC oscillator. This is one way clock signals are generated in uh, ICs. So here, that frequency of that oscillation is basically the natural uh, frequency, omega n. So let's uh, take a quick look here. Now, uh, let's, let's take a look here. So here, I've added a voltage probe and the voltage probe is telling me that the frequency of that oscillation is actually 159 hertz. Uh, let's see if we can make sense of this. We have one millihenry inductor and a one millifarad capacitor. So let's take a uh, stab at calculating that. So here, omega n equals square root of one over LC. So L is one millihenry. Uh, and C is one millifarad. So one times 10 to the power of minus three. So omega equals one over square root of one times 10 to the power of minus three. That's millihenry. Uh, one times minus three, that's millifarad. Uh, and that's omega. So omega is 1000 radians per second. Now I want to calculate that in terms of frequency. And omega is equal to two pi f. So f equals omega divided by two times pi. And I see that frequency is actually 159 hertz. So that's, that's perfect oscillation we're seeing because in this particular circuit, uh, with the resistor set to zero, the, 
the uh, the L and the C are acting as a perfect oscillator. The energy is tra being transferred from the inductor towards the capacitor and capacitor towards the inductor. And hence, I see this oscillation of exactly 159 hertz. Now let's go here and set this to resist into some some small value. So I'm going to set 0.1 ohm for now. Now what will what should happen and say that and it'll say that I need to stop my simulation. So let me stop the simulation for a second. So what I just did was I set the resistance value to 0.1 ohm. Now before I set that up, the, the inductor and capacitor didn't have any place to, to uh, dissipate the energy. So they were simply transferring the energy from one to the other. And that's why we were seeing a perfect oscillation right here. That line right here is the 10 volt line. Now let's see what will happen as soon as I, as I do that. Now as soon as I do that, as soon as I do that, now notice what's happening is I don't see any more oscillation right here. But at the very beginning, so let me restart that simulation and I will pause it now. So take a look at what happened here. Started at zero, 10 millisecond later, that's a voltage input. And that this plot right here, you see this oscillation. That oscillation is also 159 hertz because that's what that's what we're seeing uh, based on the natural frequency of the circuit given the inductor and the capacitor value. But you all, not now we don't see a perfect oscillation. The energy being transferred from the capacitor to the inductor, back to the capacitor, back to the inductor. Some of that energy is being dissipated in this 0.1 ohm resistor. So we see that it slowly is starting to decay. And if we let it go, it will continue to decay and eventually set uh, settle down at perfectly 10 volts so that's 10 volt per division is what we have for that channel so we have 10 volts right here now how long did it take to settle about uh, so it looks like each of these uh, these divisions are set to 20 milliseconds so there's 10 of that uh, 30 50 70 80 about 90 milliseconds or so about 100 milliseconds uh, up right here if you want to talk about this to settle down so this kind of response this kind of response is called an underdamp response and if we use the values of r l and c and recalculate back as to what jetta was we're going to see and uh, by jetta i mean right here in this expression right here if we calculate the value of jetta based on omega n, which is 1000, so 1 over 2000 times r over l, so let's do that. So jetta, uh, jetta equals, in our case, 1 over uh, so it's r, r in our case was 0 0.1 divided by 2 times omega n times l was 1 e to the power minus 3. And we're going to see that that number is much, much smaller than much, much smaller than 1. So that basically gives rise to an underdamped system. So let's go back to our simulation again. And this time what we'll do is set up, uh, change this value from 0.1 to, let's see, 1 ohm. All right, 1 ohm. All right, now what, let's see what happens here. Now if I do this, notice what happened compared to before. It started at zero. At 10 milliseconds, the input went from zero to 10. In response, the voltage across the capacitor did overshoot a little bit, had a single oscillation, and came back and settled at 10 volts. Okay, So with a one, now in that same exact thing if we do it, if we set the value of the resistor at 1 instead of 0.1, we do see that jetta is getting 0.5. So jetta is getting 0.5, so that means we're still underdamped, and that's what we're seeing here in the time response. Now let's multiply that by 2. Right? If I have 2 ohm, now let's see what the response should be. Now if I have 2 ohms, if my R is 2, jetta is perfectly equal to 1. Now let's see what that response looks like in the time domain. So as I run this simulation, now notice what happened. So let me change that time base, reduce that time base. You can see that from zero, so I reduced the time base to five millisecond per division. So it was zero for 10 millisecond and then went up. And notice how it went, the voltage across the capacitor 
rose exponentially, settled pretty quickly in about seven to eight uh, milliseconds, it had settled up to 10 volts. This kind of response where jeta is equal to one, and that's what we calculated jeta to be when r equals two, this kind of response is called a critically damped response. Okay, now let's increase this value of two to 10. So if I have r equals 10, now let's see what that will do. So jeta is 10. So clearly, uh, jeta is going to be much greater than one. And this kind of case we call is an uh, we call it an overdamped system. So when r is equal to 10, uh, let me stop the simulation again and go. Okay. So let me uh, change the time division. Oops. Let me increase that so we can actually see the response. Uh, so it took much, much longer than the critically damped system. So in this case, I see I changed the division to 20 millisec millisecond per division, uh, and I went, took me 10, about 30, about 40 millisecond this time to settle down, whereas earlier on the critically damped case, I had gotten there pretty quickly in about 10 milliseconds or so. In this case, it's taking me longer. So this is called overdamp response as I start to increase the value of the resistor in this case. So I start to increase the value of the resistor in this case, I start to see, oh, I start to see the exponential increase in the voltage across the capacitor, but it takes a really long time to settle to its final value. And when it eventually finally settles down, it looks like it is now settled down. So let me stop that. And if I change this number of divisions, uh, so I now have set up 100 millisecond per division. So it looks like it took about a 90 here, 190, 290, 390, almost 490 milliseconds for it to settle. Okay, so these are different time domain response of a RLC circuit. We're looking at the time domain response of the voltage across the capacitor. And to recap, this is the differential equation of a second order circuit. The differential equation is in standard form. The R over L is in a standard form referred to as two times jeta omega n. Jeta is the uh, oscillation factor. Uh, omega n is a natural frequency uh, of the circuit. Uh, and uh, omega n is given by square root of one over LC. Uh, we saw three different cases of circuit, one called underdamp response, uh, where uh, one the first response we looked at was with no R, the only thing that this circuit did was not decay, it only oscillated, and it oscillated perfectly at a natural frequency of 1,000 radians per second, which translates to 159 hertz. And then we slowly started to increase the value of R. So we started out by putting in R equals 0.1, which basically led us to jeta equals 0.05, which is less than one, which gave us an underdamped response. The underdamped response was the one where we had uh, the voltage go from zero to a high overshoot, undershoot, overshoot, undershoot, and eventually settle down. Then we set the value of jeta to be equal to two ohm. Uh, we did one ohm in the middle, but when we set jeta, uh, the resistance equal to jeta was came out to be, the jeta calculation came out to be equal to one, which is called a critically damped system. That basically means the value goes and settles pretty quickly. Uh, to its final steady state value. And then finally, as we increase the R to about 10 to our 100, we saw that it took the circuit a long time to settle. It did settle without any oscillation, but uh, we suppressed the overshoot and undershoot and the circuit didn't oscillate, but it took a very long time for that particular circuit to settle down. So that's what we saw in this particular case.